You're listening to Inside Real Estate, your source for all things mortgage and real estate related. The show that brings you all the hottest topics and insights directly from those who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. I'm sitting back enjoying the show backyard today, boys. Uh, what's up, everyone? Paul Postakis here. Oh, my God. I've got black stuff on my face. Uh, Salvador Cusmano, Brad Weisgerber. We are inside real estate. How you boys doing? I had smush, smush, smush on my face. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so, uh, the outside yeah, podcast, so that's a new one. I like it. It's a new one, dude. I wanted to get some air today. I was like, fuck it. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. So, um, today it was interesting, guys. Like last week, uh, we were doing this mortgage masters thing, and Casa was supposed to be on. We had uh, Barry on Casa, obviously, didn't, didn't make it. Um, and then today we had Matt on. Matt's going to do the show. Uh, he's going to be here in a few minutes. And I think it was, uh, you know, he hasn't really made a comment on all that stuff. I don't want to like, beat it up and like spend the whole show talking about it and be like all negative because he's doing a lot of positive stuff too right so but we i mean we, we're definitely gonna ask him he's 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 been he's, he said he's okay talking about it so uh, uh there's been a lot of banter that he uh hasn't made a comment yet i've heard from people well, what's matt gonna say i don't i really don't think matt cares i think matt's like running a company you know what i mean i think he probably is doing a lot of like i mean he's he's got a lot of employees He's building the largest pedestrian bridge in North America at the moment, uh, which is wild if you think about that, right? Yeah, we'll talk yeah. to him about that. Yeah, we'll talk to him about, uh, you know, Conquest. I came out with, you know, the market kind of, last time we talked to him, the market was kind of crazy. It was really shaky. Uh, people were like, Matt's going out of business. He didn't go out of business. Uh, he came out with a, a product called Conquest that, that a lot of, you know, people are taking advantage of. So I want to talk to him about that. Uh, but we, I, but, you know, I, I'm going to start by asking him some some poignant questions about the whole casa thing and i think uh um you know he's he's totally open to answer i asked him i was like dude are we are we good to talk about that and he was like ask me anything dude whatever you want so that'll be interesting right it'll be interesting to see so um obviously so for those that don't know uh casa anthony casa took a leave of absence he was the leader of aim which is uh you know the uh an association that was built to to further the broker movement in the country. You know, there's, you know, a lot of people that don't know, you, you know, you've got your big banks, then you've got your direct lenders like Quicken and these big companies. And you've got like brokers that are like local companies and he's been supporting them through the crash. The broker market kind of disappeared. And Matt really has championed the broker market to like come back. And he's done an amazing job creating a platform for that. So I don't, I don't think we'll, we would be here without it. You know what I mean? Like, like we were able no. to start a company because Matt supported us so much, right? Yeah, I mean, typically, you know, in the historically, right, brokers have always kind of had worse technology, um, tougher processes or, you know, higher rates or whatever it may be, you know, something to point a finger at them. But now uh, between Matt and AIM and, you know, all the other wholesale lenders basically having to raise their levels up to the bar that UWM's at, uh, brokering yeah. has become the better way to go for a loan. I mean, retailers are just absolutely swamped right now there's there's a capacity issue right now uh it's funny because uh like a lot like our shop if we got like 50 new files tomorrow it would be a problem or 100 100 new files tomorrow right because we're at, we're like we're like busting at the seams we're looking right. for people to hire but and, our capacity you know? is on the front end right on the back yeah. end being a broker you have a multitude of, of different channels to, to place your loans at right so like if UWM is busy or their rates are high or whatever it is that we can't send deals there. We have other options and vice versa. Right. So especially yeah, yeah. I think we valued, you know, at least on our end, being a broker specifically through this crash. Um, well, I don't want to call it crash, but through this pandemic. Right. Um, right. Things change quickly. And, and if you didn't have options, you were kind of left in the dark. Yeah. And, you know, when the whole thing went down with the pandemic, for those that don't, 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 don't know, there's like a liquidity issue. People didn't really want to touch a mortgage. We didn't really know, you know, what was saleable loan on the, on the secondary markets. And I think Matt did a really good job of saying right now, this is what the market, the appetite for the market is. And he priced it really well. And I think a lot of people took advantage of it and people went from like, you know, you know, swearing, at Matt, Matt, where's Matt? What's Matt? And all of a sudden, oh, Matt's the best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, you can never make the gallery happy, it seems like sometimes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of mortgage brokers are just 
you know, small businesses or, or individuals that are completely reliant on uh, the lenders they work with, right? Or, or the one or two yeah. that they hold themselves to. So it's easy to call names or point fingers or whatever. But at the end of the day, like, if you have your own business, you have to be set up to be diverse and uh, to kind of be water to a glass, right? The, the shape of that glass changed multiple times over the past few months. So you got to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. So now that Anthony's gone, guys, what do you think? How do, what does the future of, of AIM look like? I mean, he was the mouthpiece. He was loud. He was brash. I didn't always agree with his tactics, yeah. but you could not fault his passion. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, AIM is bigger than one person, you know? I mean, I don't think right. that him leaving uh, is going to stop the momentum that's already going, right? And everything that's mm -hmm. put behind it. I mean, I there might be some things that, that change, but ultimately, you know, I mean, there's other powers, I'm sure, behind the scenes pushing the agenda forward. Yeah. You uh, did, does it lose some steam? I mean, we've had companies like Flagstar back out. We've had uh, you know, if you, like they're like we're out of aim because of Casa's comments. How do you feel about companies kind of backing out of aim when it was like almost like one person's rhetoric that kind of got there? You know what I mean? What depends the whole community for potentially what you thought someone did that, that was wrong? You know what I mean? It, I don't know if that makes sense. I, I mean, I think it it does and it doesn't, but. Anthony hasn't officially left AIM, right? He's leave he, he leave of absence, is, yeah. Right, which is what they're. Well, I think he's not. He's not disassociated. He's still part of it, and they're saying it's I, not acceptable. So I would say that largely the the community of AIM, anyways, is is somewhat biased towards working with you know one or two lenders, anyways. I don't think you know flag store star caliber leaving AIM really matters. If that makes sense, I mean, I get. I get it, and I mean, you don't I'm think it matters at all. It. No, I I don't think they're bad companies at all. But I don't think that, like, I think the the whole purpose of AIM and and its message up front has now been uh, kind of translated into industry standards on the the wholesale level. Like, you don't you know poach your clients, or you don't do you know uh, the wholesale lending, which is really what I I think it kind of started as, right? And now there's just a big community of brokers who through various Facebook groups or, or meetings or whatever are going to exist no matter what. I mean, they still may use Flagstar or Caliber, right? Uh, I don't know necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't that, change like, their ability to use them. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah I don't that. I don't think on like my end, like I would not use Caliber because they're not part of our aim. I mean, again, we're brokers, right? And I'm going to use yeah. whoever's best for the client. I mean, honestly, sometimes it's like, hey, they might refi my client down the road, but like, if it's by far the best deal for them, I mean, that's that's the point. I'm trying to get my clients a good deal. You know, if yeah. I can't provide that later or, or they don't call me to refi, then shame on me, I, whatever. At the yeah. time, I got them the best deal yeah. I could. Yeah. Hey, Natalie, is Matt on? Yep, Matt just got here. Awesome. So uh, we're going to bring Matt on. Obviously, Matt is uh, the, the president and CEO of United Wholesale Mortgage and United Shore. He's done like a lot of amazing things and for us, for our industry, he, in my opinion, he, he gave everybody that that's out there a platform, an opportunity to, to be independent and work for themselves. And Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you again, as always for being gracious enough to do our show, man. How, how are you doing? Great. Glad to be here with you guys. You guys doing good. Oh, uh, we're yeah. doing good, man. We're doing real good. Um, so Matt, we're doing, Crazy time. So before we got on, before you got on, Matt, I, I was uh, talking about what happened the whole. Evening. I don't want to like sp spend the whole show talking about that because I think it's negative. I think you got a lot of other bigger, better things that you're you're doing and working on. You know what I mean? But I I did. People were asking me. You know, Matt hasn't said anything. There were companies backing out, like Flagstar with, from AIM, and you were such a huge supporter of AIM. Um, so I wanted to kind of get your feedback. Like, how do you feel? about uh what happened obviously i know you know anthony you know he's a passionate guy and he, and, he, and he's very passionate uh you might not always agree with his tactics but you couldn't disagree with his passion he he championed uh, uh the voice of a lot of brokers across the country uh, i know he stepped back now what are your thoughts on, on the whole thing that transpired with him in austin and the lawsuit and all that stuff 
Yeah, you know, in general, I mean, I think I don't think there's anyone who has a thought that believes that what Anthony said was appropriate. Um, you don't talk like that about people, let alone women, let alone anyone. Just you don't talk like that. It's just it was uh, disgusting yeah. to watch uh, when I saw the video. Um, you know, but my perspective is, you know, I don't look at AIM as Anthony Casa. I look at AIM as brokers. And, um, and yeah. you know, I think Anthony did the right thing of stepping back um, and uh, taking a leave of absence because he's got to figure out, like, that's not how we talk to anyone, let alone in a business setting or someone's wife or spouse or significant other. That's just not what we do. But the the reality is AIM is much bigger than one person. AIM is much bigger than anything. And, and we're going to always support brokers. Brokers are better. We believe in that. We believe that we're going to – everything we do drives that. And we're going to continue to do that. And, you know, lenders, I think that – back out or are suspending their sponsorship i think they're 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 a little bit too uh politically driven rather than thinking about like hey a guy made a big mistake that guy's off to the side or be gone i don't even know the details um you know but at the same time to, we don't abandon ship on brokers brokers are better we're all in with broker channel and and uh, aim has done a fantastic job for years now of helping um push the broker message help brokers succeed help companies like yourself win and be in a better position than you ever would have been without aim and so we all have to recognize that and so i'm a big supporter of aim i'll still support aim and at the same time uh if anthony comes back uh, he's got to obviously change this act because even even one slip up whether you're passionate or not you can't talk like that about women or really anyone to be honest do you, I mean a lot? So, what do you say to the people that are because this is the rhetoric out there that that aim is Matt Ishbia, aim is UWM. Uh, Matt funds it. He he funneled money to to Casa through other uh, through other companies. Um, basically, people are saying that aim is your proxy war. Like you you have you're using that and you use Matt, Anthony as your mouthpiece. Yeah, it what sounds do you like, say to those people? Yeah, well, it sounds like Quicken Loans says that. That's pretty much aim that says it because Quicken Loans is is is. Um, likes to make up anything they want to make themselves feel good and proud. Um, but the reality is I've read this ridiculous uh, lawsuit uh, that ties my name into it, which has nothing. To, I've never owned a processing company. My father never owned a process. I mean, they're just making things up. And then people ask me questions about it. So Quicken Loans is yeah. who they are and they're always going to be who they are. They're, they're the enemy of brokers. And we all know that. And anyone that doesn't think that is just naive um, and really not understanding what's going on in the market. And so I, I just keep moving on those things. I don't worry about that. Is AIM me? No, I'm the big sponsor. But don't forget, I'm the biggest sponsor of NAM also. <laughs> you know, we're the biggest wholesale lender. We're 40%. I'm the biggest of NAM, AIM, NAMBA. I mean, I go to all these different events. Originator Connect, we're the biggest sponsor. Of, like, I don't know what to tell you. We are the biggest by a lot in the wholesale channel. Of course I sponsor it. I, I'm speaking on an event later today. I speak on events all the time to support brokers um, that are not AIM, that are I'm doing a thing on vetted V8. I mean, I'm just doing all these different things. Your podcast, you're not a t associated with AIM. So yeah. if it helps right, brokers, right. I'm in. Um, of course I support AIM and I'll continue to support AIM just like I support anything that helps brokers win. And, you know, to say that it's my whatever, I mean, that's just quick and loans. And you, you know how Dan Gilbert and, and, and Jay Farner are. They're just, they are who they are. And we already knew that. So I can keep it moving. Okay, oh, yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that because, I mean, uh, for the layman out there that doesn't understand, when you say that Quicken is the enemy of brokers, uh, can you kind of quantify that so the, pe the people out there, what is it about Quicken that makes them so dangerous to the broker channel, in your opinion? Well, they just have no interest in helping brokers succeed. They have interest in helping themselves succeed, which, by the way, I'm not, a, I'm not criticizing that. People can, most businesses are like that, and that's fine. But they're also the biggest competitor to every broker on every single transaction, from commercials to marketing and any broker that submits loans. So, as you guys know, they're going to solicit their loans. You can say, oh, I'm trying to get my borrower the best deal. Yeah, you know what? Like, try to get my borrower the best deal. And at the same time, I don't need my partner, supposed partner, um, you know, soliciting my client. It's like uh, I've said it before. And I'll say it again, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, my job is to treat and I'm, I'm divorced now, but I'm trying to, try to treat my wife or girlfriend, right? We'll say it that way, the right way all the time. And, but it doesn't make it okay that my uncle hits on her at dinner. Like my uncle's a bad guy if he's doing that. I get my girl, right? And so you don't, you don't do that. And that's what Quicken does. And that's who Quicken is. And, you know, and, it, and it's so obvious. It's like, it's like, I'm looking at a, I'm, it's like, I'm looking at this computer. Like, I know I'm looking at a laptop right now and I know what I'm seeing. It's black and white. And so Quicken is who they are. Um, I don't have any negative things to say like, hey, that they're bad, um, that it's a bad business strategy. It's their business strategy. But anyone that doesn't understand that's their business strategy. And so they would love to, you know, Dan Gilbert and Jay Farner would love to make me look bad, make brokers look bad. They even sell their servicing now so that, so that therefore 
the broker's prepayment speeds go up. Like people don't understand the big picture. People just think that it's like, oh, Quicken Loans is just trying to do loans. They're trying to be together with us. Like you, you just don't understand. And anyone that's naive enough to send them a loan is really just not truly in this for the long term. Got it. So, um, and you know, they, they did go public, public and public uh, paperwork. There was some verbiage in there about their QLMS and how it was a referral type. Uh, they used it as a referral type situation to grow their business, the, the, the wholesale side. Um, which was interesting because they didn't say that it wasn't like a separate part of the company. Mm -hmm. And I look, I know Austin, I know Bob, I think they're good people, but you're talking, we're talking business models right now. And, and it's just so people understand out there what, what Matt's talking about is as a broker, we're in our market and Quicken spends a lot of money. I mean, if you look at the paperwork, a lot of money in marketing, a lot of lead generation. And they, they, to your point, you feel as though they're in your market competing against you, but they're all like on the other side of it saying, hey, don't worry, we're friends. Is that kind of the way, the way you're looking? And then they're just going to end up being your girlfriend and taking her to the and keeping her is basically, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take yeah. your girlfriend. I'm out. Yeah. And it's not that I feel that I know it. Right. And, and it, I've said it for years and you've known it. You guys all know it. Everyone that's really in the industry understands it. But then when their S1 came out, you can see it. You can see that they, they boast. They boast in there about how they get their loans from their partner network and then they refinance 73% of them with a retention rate. Like, what are we talking about here? And you can see they spend a billion dollars in marketing. Like, what are we talking about here, guys? I mean, it's, it's not a, you know, before their S1, you could say, well, that's Matt's opinion. And I have, I don't know. It's not my opinion. It hasn't ever been an opinion. It's been fact. And now it's, it's out there for everyone to see it. And once again, it's not that I don't think that Dan Gilbert's a bad guy, right? I don't think that Jay Farner's a bad guy. These are probably really nice people. And I don't have anything negative to say about people. It's a business model and hey, they might not like my business model. It's okay. Everyone has different business models. Brokers have different business models. Realtors have different business models. Business models are great. It's just, you have to understand who's aligned with you and who's not. And good people can have different business models than you. And it's nothing disrespectful. It's just my perspective is don't get confused on whose business models. What is my perspective? Yeah, so they're we'll see all side Sal and Brad, you guys have seen this. They've grown in the last two years. They've, they've really like put a lot of effort into growing the wholesale side um they're definitely look, you have the best wholesale platform on the planet there's no touching it. and you're in your complete like you're continually pushing that envelope and, and giving there's more tools more opportunity and we'll talk about the the conquest program um but they are growing they are gaining market share in their in, in their in their in their little little spot there um so what do you say to those people that are choosing to do business with them that, that don't really think of it as they're my competition Petition. They're because they're they're looking at it. Like, I don't give a shit. Like I'm gonna fi I'm gonna fire this loan through. They're gonna close it. I'm gonna get paid, right? You know what I mean? So like you know that's what that's what the mentality is. So they're not. Some people might not be looking at the long term consequences of stuff. But but you're saying basically that potentially if you do that deal with them, they don't really look at you as a partner. They're looking at you as a as a revenue stream as a, and not a long term type thing. And, and absolutely, and like I said, there are loan officers that can say, hey, I'm going to send them to Quicken Loans or even Loan Depots. Like, yeah, but Quicken Loans is the worst of them. And do that. And it's okay. I'm not, I'm not mad at them. I just don't think they understand business. And you can't understand business if you're trying to win long term. Once again, if you're a loan officer just slinging loans and trying to do loans because rates are really low and I'm going to do it for the next six months or a year, like, th that's fine. If you're looking to try to do this as a career and build your brand and your business, you would not support um, your biggest competitor. Um, and help them put money in their pocket to go out and try to put you out of business. It's just, a, it's just a silly concept. And, and so mm. I have nothing against those loan officers that think that way. Um, and you know, Quicken Loans, whether they're growing or not, I don't know. The reality is I don't know many brokers that use them. I think they do a lot of business with big, large retail lenders to that help mm -hmm. them put loans True. to the broker yeah. channel, which actually hurts brokers again. So I hope everyone understands that, that a big retail lender has their own underwriters. Quicken will be happy to take their loans from them. Um, and then that puts brokers at a, dis, uh, a disadvantage. Once again, you have to think big picture. Some people don't. If they don't, that's why Quicken will grow, and, and, and it's fine. And, and once again, I don't have any disrespect towards Dan, and I hope that they do well in their business and, and succeed. Um, I just don't want them um, – I don't want them to continue to hurt brokers, and that's why I, I say what I say. And, and, and once how, again, they you, uh, them, them taking shots at us, as in me, and UWM all the time, you know, it gets old, but at the same time, we stay above the fray, and we just – I, I always tell how it is. I've been having the same story for years on how we do things. Do you feel like it's gotten a little too personal between you guys uh, and, and even AIM and, and, and CASA with the whole thing? Has it gotten to the point where, you know, it, it, look, again, you can be passionate and you can, you can, like you said, the business model is the business model. 
But when do you believe, I know you think what Casa did was obviously wrong. Um, but it, it, at some point, the, the, you start saying like, I, I don't even care about them anymore. I'm going to do what I do, and, I, and I'm going to support my people as good as I can, and screw them. Like they can do whatever they want. But, but if it sometimes it feels like it does get a little personal. You know, honestly, I feel the reverse. I don't think it's personal at all. I, I like I said, if Jay Farner walked in my office right now, I shake his hand, see how he's doing. Dan Gilbert walks in here. Hopefully, he's doing better and getting healthy. Like I have nothing personally against these guys. Um, Got it. Uh, okay. The reality is, though, um, I have something personal for my sixty-five hundred people and their families, and then the forty thousand brokers. And I say, hey, listen, if someone is going to hurt my people, my team members at my company, or someone's going to hurt <clears throat> my clients, I'm going to stand up for them. Not nothing, not personal. It's not like I want them to be sick or get hurt or not succeed or go out of business. Like I wish them the, the best. I just want to make sure people understand. If you, if you, as long as you're educated and you walk in with eyes open, then hey, do who do what you want. I don't care. We're we're so much bigger than them uh, in wholesale. They're not even relevant to us at our size in wholesale. But at the same time, they're good. They're good. They're doing a good job. And if, if they can so solve things for brokers, help brokers succeed, it. I just wish they would come on board and say, "Listen, we're not going to solicit your clients. We're going to do right by brokers." I'd, I'd welcome. I put my arms around them, help them in. Like let's 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 do this together. Like let's do the right thing from a business model. I I'd, I'd welcome them in in that. And I I I hope one day they, they change their mindset on it and not say seventy three percent of all loans that come to us we retain through our retention teams. Like that's not a good stat for brokers. Right, right. So you heard it here first. So you're willing to work together as long as it's for the brokers and the community first. That's that's really what you're what you're what you're very focused on. A hundred percent. I have nothing, no animosity towards Dan or Jay. Um, I wish them all the best. And and if they wanted to do the right things, just like okay. some other, like listen, help brokers. Let's win together. I bet if they help brokers and we help brokers, the broker channel would explode. It's already exploding either way. But if they want to come in and, and help out, that'd be fantastic. Just not being the antithesis of brokers is really what they are mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, I get it. Uh, well, I appreciate you touching on that. I know it, 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 you you haven't really said much about it, but I think you're just probably just working. So that's what I that's people are like. Well, Matt hasn't said anything. I'm like, bro, he's kind of busy, right? Like he's doing some stuff right now. So, uh, but I appreciate you coming on here and kind of said. Do you think uh, Eam is I mean, look? I know Mark Summers, who's who's going to be kind of taking over interim right now. He's a great dude, very very nice guy. I think he's going to do a good job. Do you think Aim is better or worse without Anthony? And would you like to see him come back in the same same capacity that he was before? Well, I'm I'm a believer in in second chances for anyone. But if you come back, if he comes back, he's got he, he he can't have those types of slip ups. Those slip ups are it's not even a it's not even a slip ups. Not even the right word. That that despicable comment and talking about people. You just don't do that, right? And so uh, my perspective is, I give everyone a second chance. And a lot of times I give people third chances if they if they say they're sorry and they and they work on themselves and get better, just like I would for our team member that has. A drinking problem if we can help get them back on and rehabilitate and get like we, i don't throw people away um whether it's anthony whether it's a team member here whether it's family members friends like i give everyone a chance and so uh mark summers is a, is a superstar katie sweeney does a great job over there aim is going to keep on rolling mm -hmm. and if anthony comes back and does a great job i'll be there they're supporting him as well and as long as he stays on the on the right path and i'm sure he will because anthony's a smart guy a hard-working guy passionate guy he made a mistake he was drinking and made a, a dumb decision and you know what? It's not acceptable. There's no, there's no excuse for it. And, uh, and, and he's paying the price right now. You know, it's interesting. You just said something that you, you, you do forgive and I've seen it happen, but some people kind of sometimes take it as you're surrounding yourself with bad people. But what I think what you just kind of have outlined is a little bit different. I think you are like, you deserve an opportunity. And if you are repentant and you, and you say, look, I made a mistake, like you aren't going to just toss them away. And that's an interesting concept because a lot of people would be like, I don't want to be anywhere near that person. I'm out. Right. It's yeah. probably a lot harder to say it's OK. I'm going to I'm going to I'll let you back in. You made some issues in your in your life. And people have brought this up in the past with people in your organization had like some past issues. But you, what you're saying is this is more about a human like acknowledging that they did something wrong and you're not you're not going to you're not going to discard them. Absolutely. If you discarded everyone that wronged you, you wouldn't have anyone around you. Right. That's just the reality of the world. Like I give everyone a chance. And as long as people are sorry for what they do, whether it's like, like I said, you can talk about a girlfriend, you can talk about a boyfriend, you can talk about a, a brother or sister, a friend like they make one bad decision. Are you done with them forever? Now, if they continue to make that decision or continue to do the wrong thing, then I'm done. And that's OK. Those are people you move on without. But one yeah. bad decision uh, does not end a relation with me. And same thing with our team members here. People make bad decisions. And uh, if they say they're sorry and they try to get better, we, we keep it moving and we try to uh, be positive. That is awesome, man. That's, that's awesome. So I'm done talking about that. Let's talk about some good shit. So uh, 
Listen, man, I want to start by, like, obviously, you, you, 6,500 team members we're at now. Is that what we're saying? Mm-hmm. That's yes. wild. So just so for, for some perspective, uh, we, we were there early, Sal, when you guys were at a, you know, in a, in a, in a shopping mall so park, parking lot or shop, like a shopping set. And you just and I, I've watched you kind of uh, fiercely and in this with the speed that you've been able to grow and create this thing, and which isn't easy. When you grow that quickly, you went from like 2000 to 6000. It seems like overnight. It really did seem like overnight you did this. Now you're building. Can we talk about this pedestrian? What are you doing? <laughs> like you decided to build the largest pedestrian bridge in North America. Why are you doing that? Well, so, you know, everything's about team. You know, I'm a big team person, culture, team, family. You guys know that. And I look at myself as partners with brokers and, and then our team members here. And so we bought this big building, 600,000 square feet. And I said, gosh, we can never outgrow this building. Well, it took about 12 months and we were running out of space again. So we bought a 900,000 square foot building across the street. So we have 1.5 million combined, but you guys know Michigan winters. Nobody's walking over there. No one wants to jump on a shuttle bus to walk across the street. You guys, you actually know in the old buildings, right? It's like no one actually went. Yeah. And so I said, we ain't doing that again. And so spending spending a lot of money building a bridge to keep that culture, that one bridge, I mean, that one um, roof feel that, hey, you can walk back and forth. We got moving walkways and people will be collaborating, collaborating and working together. And it's so important to the culture of UWM. I wouldn't run the business. If I had to have multiple buildings and one in California, one in Ohio, one in Minnesota, it's not it's not fun for me. This is fun, having a family and a team feel. And so the bridge helps keep that together. I yeah, it's funny you say across sure, the street. Like, uh, like working with some other lenders where it's like, you don't know who you're calling. You don't know where they're at, right? Like you're calling them at 9 a.m. and they're not even awake till noon our time, right? Because they're California or whatever it is. So I think that's super important. Absolutely. It really is. By the way, you say it's across the street, like like your neighbors across the street, by the way. It's like how far away from the other building is it? It's a thousand it's foot bridge. So it's the longest bridge in America, a thousand foot bridge, 26 feet wide. So it's big. And, uh, you know, but same time, uh, it's almost done. It's I mean, it's, it was supposed to be done October 1. It'll probably be done on December 1 because of COVID and that delayed a little bit. But um, it's going to be done before the winter and people can go back and forth between the buildings and um, I can run meetings over there or over here, and we have, you know, one building, one campus, even though it's two buildings with a bridge. Are you already occupying that other building across the street? Yeah, we already have two thousand people over there. Oh wow! Yeah, two thousand oh, wow. people over there, and and growing fast, and so it will uh, continue wow. to expand that group as we grow. And um, was and- Somerset Mall the inspiration? <laughs> it was definitely something I thought of. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's exactly the same type, same type of concept as Somerset Mall, if you think of it that way. Is is connect? one side going to have like sacks and the other side have like Macy's? <laughs> <laughs> one's going to have a lot of good food and one's going to have the healthy food and I'll go to yeah. the non-healthy stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, you are huge on culture. You are big on having people working, collaborating in the same building. Uh, obviously with COVID, it's caused uh, people to be a little fearful to be in, a, in, a, in an environment like that. What are you doing to obviously protect your people? Because a lot, I've hear a lot of people. Oh, Matt's making people go to work, and you know they're like they're uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like so, like can you ad- address that? Like what, what are you doing? Because you do have a building; it's beautiful, and you built this beautiful, and you love collaboration. So how are you mitigating those two? Yeah. So uh, a lot of our, I mean, a great, great majority of our team members are working from home. We made it optional for our team members to come in and work. It's a lot more fun when there's people here than when they're not here. Um, and yeah. so our team members come in, and it, you know, there are certain roles that have to be here. So yeah, like if you're a security guard. <laughs> I don't know. You can't secure your own house. I actually need you here to secure our, our facility. Right? If, you know, if, you handle, if you handle the notes, the mortgage notes, like I actually it's a physical note. It's a piece of paper. I can't, can't do that from home. But the great majority of our jobs can be done from home. And uh, people have the option. If they want to work from home, they're working from home. But a lot of people have said, hey, I get the option, but I'm sick of sitting in my one bedroom apartment. I'm ready to come back in. And if you come in, we do, we do symptom checks. We have, I've created, you guys know, you know, I'm very, very, I put shields between each desk. So we did that. People are wearing masks when you're moving around and you're not at your desk. We do everything the right way always to, to comply because you know what? Health and safety is the number one priority. If our people or team members yeah. don't feel safe and healthy, then, 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 then we don't have much of a team. And so we've done all those things. We'll continue to do all those things. And at the same time, I welcome people back with open arms. I'm excited to have people back and we're doing all the social distancing, all the huddles and things we do. We do them all virtually. Conference rooms is spread out. You cafeteria, you know, the gym and all those stuff are closed. Like we do all the right things and, and uh, you know, we're proud of it. And I, but I'm real big on, I love when people are here. I love walking out my office and seeing people rather than for a while that I didn't see anyone. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, obviously, we, I mean, there's just there's this thing where it might, might come back in the fall, and people are saying it's going to get worse. So, I'm, are you at all? Do you think there's going to be any economic impact if COVID? Now we, we now let's just go back a little bit. Sorry, you went through COVID the first. You handled that really well. Uh, if I thought you did, I, obviously, it was a lot, people are bitching and complaining, but ultimately, you're here and you're you're providing a lot of value to brokers, and that's really what what matters at the end of the day. Um, are you, if economically speaking, we've kind of figured out the whole. Uh, you know, liquidity thing, you know, people, we got, bail, we got a lot of bailout money. Do you think that, um, a roundabout is going to be a problem for us? Like, uh, like the back end? I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't know any about the, you know, the, when will the pandemic end? Like, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I can't figure that stuff out, but I do feel confident that, um, we've seen this play. Everyone knows what to do and everyone is doing all the things to be socially distanced and safe. And if it rises up more, like we know people can work from home and, the real economic right, right. outcome is there'll be lost a little bit more of the lost jobs, of course, if they shut things down again. I don't think they will. I think it's done in the safe way. If people follow the processes and follow the protocols, I think things will be okay. Um, but once again, I don't know. Either way, for us, everyone in the mortgage world, like rates are going to be low for a long time, right? So there's an opportunity for everyone here to help more consumers, help them save money, help them buy a house a little cheaper than they would have. And so I feel really good about where we sit as a as a helping the American economy get through this tough time. And that's what we're going to do here at UWM. Um, perfect, man. So let's, let's talk, talk about some product you came out with a product called conquest, right? Uh, it was in response to, to the lack of liquidity and the, the uncertainty of what loans really made a lot of sense. Right? So you did, I think the smartest thing was you created a loan for the most palatable loan that you could, that, you, that was, High end that people wanted on the secondary market. I feel like I feel like you did you did a good job with that. So talk to me about the conquest program and how that came about. Yeah, I mean the conquest program was all about this. You know, simple. If you look back when we rolled out May twelfth, if you look at May eleventh, people were not talking about thirty year fixed in the twos. No one was doing them. I mean, I even mm -hmm. think that if you look it up, it was it? I think it was Jay Farner, maybe it was Dayton Gilbert. Someone, one of those guys said rates will never go below three percent, and they have a big publication talking about it. The reality is that's not true. Rates should have been lower, and they and they are lower right now. And so we were proud to be able to be the first ones to come out and say, hey, listen, 30 are fixed in the twos. That's the game. Let's roll this thing out. And we came out with it, and we basically said, hey, brokers, partners, go get new business. Of course, you can refinance your past clients, and we'll do those loans. But if you want to wow a client and have them to be your partner for life, whether it's a realtor or borrower, get them a 30-year fix in the twos and close it in 15 days, 20 days, 22 days. Wow them. And if you do that great experience with UWM, what's going to happen is you're going to get referrals and grow your business. And so that was the concept is what can I do to help brokers win? How can I help make an impact in America by lower, getting lower rates out there? How can I help brokers win by differentiating? And now if you look at rate sheets and the market has moved a little bit better, but not, not substantially since that May 12th. And the reality is there's not every loans in the twos. Now everyone's doing 30 year fixed in the twos. That's really what the world is. Um, unless it's an investment property or cash out or some of these other odd ones, but for the, for the best borrowers, 30 year fixed in the twos. And so we were proud to roll that out. We did the same thing with VA. Now we're 30 year fixed at two and a quarter and two and three eights, even on 15 year conventional, it's now one eight, seven, five or one nine, nine, nine. Now, some of those cost a little bit of money, but the reality is it's an option and options win all the time. And we want to provide options to our partners, help them go get new business, go beat the retail lenders and bring it into the broker channel and hopefully have a loan for life for that consumer. That's awesome, man. Um, and, and Sal, you've seen this. I mean, we, we've been able to really help a lot of people out, first-time buyers. I mean, the price of money is so cheap, Sal. And that product really allowed us the ability to offer something in the market that was that differentiated ourselves from a lot of other people, right? Well, yeah. And, you know, above and beyond that, pair it with a, an experience that, you know, especially when it first rolled out, I mean, you guys were probably, uh, I'd have to imagine a little slow, <laughs> you know, like uh, volume wise beforehand. And then as soon as that happened, you had the capacity, you know, on the human side to still slam these loans through. I mean, I would say our average turn time at UWM is like seven days. It's nuts, you know, versus, you know, some of the other lenders where, their rates were more attractive before. I mean, it takes like 45 days to close a loan. It's nuts. 30 days for initial underwriting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's where these other guys are at still. And, and, they, and they're not able to, you know, we, we, we prepare ourselves to be able to handle it. We bring in 5,000 loans a day, you know, and 5,000 loans get knocked out that day. And if we only get wow, 45, right. loans, you know, we're, you well, know, we're what's an impressive days. What's that? What's impressive now is, you know, still 60 days into conquest or, or maybe further, right? And I, I'd have to imagine record volumes. I mean, you guys are just still crushing it. So kudos. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, it's, it's, what, it's helping you guys and everyone else. That's the key. Help brokers, help realtors, help borrowers, <clears> and then we'll be okay if we help everyone else win. Conquest is great. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people take advantage of that, right? Those are those are all uh, Fannie, Freddie, right? Conforming loans. Uh, what? Where do you see, or when do you see the confidence in the markets to come back with a, a high balance nationwide or any jumbo products? Because right now you can't find those anywhere, right? Yeah, that, that's one of the things. So we saw what happened with the, you know, all the non-QM and a lot of the jumbo loans went away with the pandemic. And um, I see those coming back. I see them coming back uh, this year, honestly. Um, and so I'm excited about having High Balance Nationwide again and some of those programs. But right now, you know, even if I had it and I could roll it out today, which technically I can, um, the reality is everyone's doing so busy with taking care of borrowers, 30-year fixed, 2.99, 2.875. There's so many borrowers out there. That that's the focus and so i know you don't want to lose a loan but the reality is there's so much business out there for everyone and so i'm keeping ourselves focused on conventional and va loans help the veterans and the heroes of our country and help all these borrowers and close them fast and hopefully helping brokers really look great yeah i mean it's wild i was talking to someone yesterday about a jumbo loan which is why i got brought up but um you know even if jumbo comes back i doubt they're going to be anywhere you know in the, in the two eight seven five range right so yeah we're having a conversation about paying the balance down and, and getting jumping on the conquest because it's just it's really a forever loan, right? You got you got yeah. a half million dollars or six hundred thousand dollars in a mortgage. You pay it down fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars and get a two point five or eight. You're never touching that money again. You, it pays for itself. Absolutely. Don't I say mean, never. Don't say never. <laughs> <laughs> that's for, yeah, never. Is don't a say bad never, word. bro. That's like those are favorite. Yeah, that's a bad you know, word what, industry. What I'm interested to see, um, just thinking, you know, going forward is is what changes do you think are going to be coming down the road? I mean, there's going to be, depending on the industry that some of these borrowers were in, like potentially a whole quarter or even a half a year missing in income, you know, and then maybe right back to it. I'm wondering what like self-employed guidelines and, you know, do you ever see like price adjustments for risk coming in for, for self-employed borrowers directly from Fannie Mae? Yeah, I can that's happening. You know, right now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came out with some pretty strict guidelines on self employed, and a lot of people are talking about them because it's getting an you know an audited PL in the middle of the year, which is almost impossible for most business owners, or getting a PL and have the bank statement match it, which is just as is is tedious in many respects. Um, and so they've tightened up quite a bit on self employed. And the reality is everyone knows if anyone got hurt in this pandemic financially, it's mostly small businesses, small self employed businesses. Everyone got hurt, and so you can't take 18 and 19 income and just say, hey, that they're going to be good for that 20 and, and beyond. So um, I think it's going to be the next six to 12 months will be a little tighter on self-employed. Do I think a price adjustment? I, I know the jumbo market will have a price adjustment for self-employed. And so there will be some of that stuff. But the reality is I think the world will get back to normal and we're excited for that to happen, whether it's in one week, one month, six months or a year. But it will happen again. And self-employed borrowers will be just like they used to be, hopefully, and we can help them all out. Matt, uh, what new products do you see coming out, man? Like, uh, do you see uh, things loosening up? Do you see th more liquidity coming back in the market? Do you, th do you see things tightening up with unemployment and, and, and uh, verification of employments? Um, what, what can we expect uh, to add to our arsenal, or are we going to lose things from our arsenal when we're, when, for, for, the, for the general public? Yeah, I don't think you're losing anything from your arsenal. I think the, the market you're in right now serves 90, you know, what we're offering probably serves 95% of borrowers. Um, of course, there's Jumbo. Of course, there's some lower credit score FHA and some other stuff that, that might might happen. But uh, I think nothing else is going to get taken from the arsenal. I think it will only be additive going forward. It's just how quickly will it be added, uh, whether it's, like I said, one week, one month, six months, or whatever it may be. And so I don't see products changing in, in, in a major way at all um, uh, going forward. I mean, I think overlays will reduce again. They've already been reduced quite a bit from the initial uh a pandemic and all things happening back in March and they've been reduced a couple of times. And I think there'll be another re reducing overlays again, whether it's in a week or a month, but it's coming. And so I, you're not going to lose anything. You're only going to get more. That's I think awesome. It's, uh, quite impressive how quickly, you know, uh, Fannie and, and all the lenders kind of worked to make things happen, you know, uh, exceptions for tax transcripts, uh, VOEs, I mean, obviously, you know, people are verifying employment or at home. They don't maybe have a desk phone, right? So uh, exceptions for cell phones, if they receive an email, I mean, all these things rolled out in such a short amount of time. I mean, I'd have to imagine that now we're only that much more prepared, right? Like if, if 
we got shut down again. Like you have a contingency plan. Everyone's been working from home for the past few months anyways. Right. So I can't see things getting really much worse. Yep. I agree. I think it's going to only be better getting better and uh, just depends on how long this is going to take. Uh, but I agree with you completely. And we all have the plays and everyone knows what they're doing and people, a lot of people are working from home and everything's going just fine. So how do you think the, uh, the broker community going forward, uh, how do you see them competing? How do you see them at, are they adding, do you see, do you see us getting more technology uh, in our hands as brokers to be able to offer people? Do you see us being able to compete on that level when, because like, let's say I don't have a IT department that's developing stuff for me, right? I either have to go out source third party or I have to rely on my partners to kind of give me what they have as, and you've done an amazing job of giving brokers an ability to compete on a lot of levels like that. I know you've got a really big IT team. I mean, it's a big one, right? And you spend a lot of money on it. Uh, so uh, what are you working on? <laughs> like, what are we, you know what yeah, I mean? So here, we got 900 IT people. They're awesome. They're building That's stuff. That's wild. You know, all they're doing all day is helping brokers grow. We don't have them working on a retail or working on our, our insurance company, our appraisal thing. Like we, we don't do any of that stuff. We're a broker's partner, wholesale lending. And so everything we're building is to make things sweet for you guys, help you grow, help you succeed, help you offer value to realtors, help you get easier. Like every, if I'm making things faster, easier, more affordable, I'm winning. And so I'm going to doing those things. And so we, we've rolled out some really big things recently. Easy findings has been a big deal, been a big hit. Ease Docs 2.0, make things much smoother and easier. Like those have been huge things. And I got a couple coming really soon that will change the game as well in a very positive way. And so I'm not going to tell you what they are because I, I like surprises. But uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you this in the next, yeah. you know, before this year's over, you're going to see some really cool stuff that's going to help make your job easier, help add value to your consumers, or help you save money, or all three. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this is kind of related, but I mean, obviously Quicken went IPO, they're, they're going public, which I'm blown away by. I never expected them to do that. Um, would you ever do that? Would you ever go IPO? Would you ever go public? Do you think it's a, it's something that's on the table so you can raise capital if you ever needed to? Because you guys would be worth something too, right? You guys probably do all right on the as an IPO, right? Yeah. So have you, has that ever been a conversation? You know, we, you know, our job, my job is to look at everything, always look at everything, um, you know, whether Quicken yeah. does it or whether they don't do it, whether someone's like, we're always looking at all options to make sure that we are long-term stable business and will help our brokers grow and succeed. And so um, I won't say anything's off the table. However, what I would say is this, you know, the, 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 the seeing what Quicken's doing and, and they're doing a good job and they're going to go out in public, seeing a competitor get stronger. Um, and uh, someone that's going to potentially hurt brokers get stronger does uh, rev my competitive juices to say, hey, I got to make sure that I, I don't let them get stronger than us. And and from a, not from wholesale, just an overall business. And I'm not worried about the wholesale side of it, but we got to make sure they don't hurt our brokers anymore. And so, uh, you know, I look at everything. It's not something that we're doing tomorrow. Um, and at the same time, we're looking at all options to make sure that brokers can win. I'm going to be here for the next 20, 30 years doing this, kicking butt with you guys and helping everyone win and succeed. And anything I can do to help make sure we're in the best position to help you is what we'll continue to look at. So you you think potentially the the IPO makes them stronger? Because I have a different thought on that. I, I think it kind of hurts their ability to to be who they are. But but you think it potentially does make them a little bit strong? Is is, is it the cap just a capital infusion that you're like okay we just have all this money now? Because it, but my thing was is they had the money. It wasn't like they didn't have money. So I was confused by the public thing. But you think potentially it might make them a little bit stronger from a capital standpoint? Absolutely, absolutely, it makes them stronger. Um, and you know, of course, there's always risk at what we'll do to your culture and how will things evolve. But right, you know, Dan, right. is a smart guy, and I, I, he's got a lot of smart people around him, and he has four classes of shares. He made it a controlled company. He runs the show. It's it's not changing. It's just they're getting a little bit of liquidity and have access to more liquidity at a, at, at a drop of a hat. And so that makes you know, yeah. once again, money usually whoever has the most money usually has the most ability to do different things and invest in things. And so. Um, you know, and I don't think they're going public selling everyone that, hey, we're going to do less business in the future. Hey, we're going to, we're going to not, you know, they, they got their title company, they got their real estate company. And so once again, I wish them the best. I think it's good for non-banks in general. I just think it's bad for mortgage brokers. But once again, it's good for Quicken, of course. Is there, is there, is there anything that Quicken could do that would, that to change their model to become more palatable in your eyes to the broker community that would be different other than not calling our clients right that's number one right like obviously don't call our past clients don't don't go after our book 
Um, is there anything that, that they, like, if they were like to say today, Matt, like Bob, or, or which they're, again, I think they're really good people. I love Bob. I love, I love Austin. But if they were like, I want to extend an olive branch, let's say hypothetically, what does that look like to you? Like, what, what would they have to do to say to get in the good graces of the broker community? And instead of looking, being, being looked at as an enemy, now you're looked at as a partner. What would it, what would that take? What does that look like? You know, it's a good question. I think it, it really has to be showing that you're a partner and not showing that you're a competitor. And it doesn't mean they have to shut down retail. I wouldn't suggest that. But the reality is um, the way they market, the way they talk negatively about brokers on their commercials and all the different things, like that's not good for anyone. And, and, and what are they doing to help drive business to brokers besides just take their clients? And right. Um, oh, I'll do your loan for you. I'll give you a great rate on it. That's great. But, you know, how do we they help? the broker channel grow and succeed rather than just say, Hey, I'd love to be your partner, you know, in quotation, because they're not really a partner and say, I'll do your loans for you and we'll close them and we'll do all good. Like that's not, that's, that's like the bare minimum. They're an investor. They're a wholesale investor, right? There are some that are wholesale lenders that are lenders and not just an investor. And then there's us who I think, and there's a couple others like that are partners, true partners that actually want to help you win. And so it's a mindset shift. I don't think they'll make that shift because I don't think they, Actually, I, I know that they don't believe in it, right? They don't believe in the broker channel the way we do. They just see it as an opportunity. It's it's growing and I got to get my get my action in there. And that's a, a channel because Quicken's 85, 90% refi in their retail channel. Well, brokers are much more balanced. So they know when the rates go up, broker channel is going to be the growth model. And so they're smart people, um, but they have to do a lot. They have to change their, their mentality and help brokers. Like I, like I said, I don't have anything negative about people. Just business models that hurt brokers are not business models that I'm going to support in any way. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're adamant about that. Go, go I, mean, ahead, I think as a, a broker, you can just kind of see who cares about you know the broker when you do a loan with them, right? Like, what type of responses do you get when you call someone and ask them to help you with something? Is it well, you know, that's why we do it, you know? And and unfortunately, uh, there's no no one you can talk to. It's just a, basically a system. I mean, it, it's it's quite difficult uh, to work with a company that doesn't want to give up any control i mean you can't even order your own title work there it's nuts yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. i think i think yeah. so I, i'm gonna ask um, impact go, a lot of, a lot go of ahead sorry go ahead i'm good so i was gonna ask you so there's you know there's these companies now that are becoming like mega brokers almost like a nexa um they're, they're they're they've got a model by which they're just you know increasing their their, their employee uh footprint do you see that as a as a sustainable model for businesses where because the way i think i believe the way that they work is um they charge very little to their broker to, to be part of their system but they just want a big network of brokers across the country it seems like i don't know their model intimately but but it seems as though we're starting to see the growth of certain brokerages uh, that now are starting to compete with each other within the same channel and be potentially taking market share from each other. You know what I mean? Like if, if let's say Omega Lending tomorrow blew up and we had, you know, a uh, hundred loan officers, for sure we're, we're, we're taking market share from other brokers. Uh, how do you see the competition between brokers? How, do, how does UWM being so agnostic as far as that goes um, feel about the fact that maybe the, there's going to be this growth of, of uh, brokers where they would be cannibalizing their own people, I guess would be the, the way I put it. Yeah. So the way I think about it is, you know, our job is to put everyone in a position to succeed. Your model was a successful model at Omega. Uh, you said Nexa or any of these stuff. Like we, our job is to help everybody win. Now, does it, does it, do we ever cross over? Like, Hey, when we were all 14% of the market, there was very little cross. Now we're 21, 23, 25. You know, until we get to 30, right. 40, 50 percent, I think there's a lot less crossover. Remember, still the great majority, 78 percent of the business after of, in the first quarter was done in retail channels. And so, uh, you know, whether you hire loan officers, you hire 10 loan officers tomorrow, Paul, you're going to hire eight based on the math that are from retail. So and then there will be two that potentially could affect another broker. And so, yes, will there be some some conflict and uh, here and there? Yes, but it's very, very minor. And um, my perspective is we work as a team. Like I'm good with everybody winning. Like I, I have wholesale lenders that I compete with and I'm happy that they're succeeding. It's okay. Like we can get loans and so can PRMG and so can Cardinal. And so can, uh, you know, these guys, like they can all win. Like we all can win together. And so, so can you at Omega and so can Nexa or other brokers. Like we can all win together and collaborate. Of course, we're competing over that one loan at UWM and that one broker's loan. And sometimes you're competing over that loan officer, that realtor. That happens occasionally, but as long as you're trying to, you have the mentality of there's a mentality of abundance. Everyone can help each other win and succeed and grow. And, and I'm fine with it. Like I, I, I like different business models, just like our model. If you, if you know, our model is completely different than other people's model. 
everyone's got a chance to succeed. And I, I like a free market like that. Yeah, I think that I think the pie is pretty big, man. Nobody owns like a hundred percent market share, right? So, as big, big as you are, you know, it's, you're not even at whatever market share, right? It just it, there's so much out there. Right? It, it doesn't matter, and I, that's the way I look at it too. Um, all right, dude, I know you got a lot of stuff to do, so we're gonna do three questions, and we'll we'll ship you off so you can go get some more technology and, and business for us yeah. and, and loans uh, programs. So uh, I got my first question uh, is going to be if you could create any. You can create a recreational drug, and you you dictate the uh, the the effects of it. What would those effects be, and why? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I I want it to just feel like I feel every day. You know, like I I, just, like, I feel great every day. I I don't. You I, want I, the mad SBI pill? I, just want to, you know, I feel great every day. I'm lucky that I have people that care about me, people that want to be around me, my kids, um, my work. Um, so, you know, I would want it to, to keep me feeling great every day like I feel today. Um, I don't need anything different. I'm not real big on, I don't do drugs, I've never done any of that kind of stuff. And so I don't really think about it. All I think about is I want to keep being passionate and loving what I do every day. And so uh, passionate about what you do and love what you do and this, just keep me the same. I, I love it. You just want caffeine. We, we got to get you caffeinated and fully <laughs> revved. That's what it is, right? I don't drink caffeine. Um, I drink water all day, so. Yeah, if you um, if you tomorrow's uh, this the, we're not mad HBO. What part of the company uh, at UWM would you want to work in, and why? Operations. I'm an operations guy. I love process. Really? I love figuring out ways to make things better. Um, I love getting very detail oriented on granular ways to improve our process. And so um, I can sell. I can. I, I like technology, but operations. I'm an operations guy at heart, um, and I'm very big on process. Uh, through everything. And that's really what we've built a lot of our things on our business. And I got a great COO, Melinda Wilner, who is really my operations, runs all of operations, but I would, I would love to be in that world. And I think the, awesome. the best sales guys don't really have anything to sell if they don't have the best operations. Absolutely. You know? Got to have a process. I agree with that. Um, and then the next question would be, uh, if there was one industry in, in the United States that you feel that you can make an impact outside of mortgages, let's say you took over X company, um, and really just took the reins. I know that, that that's like, you, you're married to UWM, so this is very fictitious, and I know you're like, oh, I just want to do, but if there was like, if there's an industry out there that right now that you're looking at, and you're like, man, that industry is so screwed up, I could fix it in two seconds. Like, is there anything out there that you're looking at? Is, like the other day I was thinking about restaurants. I'm like, if I owned a restaurant right now, I'd buy a strip mall, and they'd all be just for uh for stash and it would just be a machine and i would have the best door dash restaurant on the planet right now that's what i would do um because i think that's the future but, but i guess for me it's like i see that as a vacuum do you see any industries right now and you're like ah like the, the airlines totally screwed up right they, they run in the red all the time but and they're always leveraged uh, most of them are and, and they can't run operationally for more than like two months before they fall apart so without revenue so like is there an industry right now that you'd look at and say that is right for the picking right now you know, I don't know if there's an industry, but there's a concept there. The two parts. One is business to business sales, business to business partnership. Like I'm real big on partnership. I love seeing other people succeed and I'd love to be involved with anything that ties to that if I was not in this mortgage business. The other thing that's even, probably even more important is I got to see where I stand. I'm competitive. And so if there's an industry that doesn't show numbers, like mortgage shows numbers so I can compete. If you're, if you're an industry that doesn't have a champion, then I'm not going to be involved. I'm not interested in being just one of the guys or gals. Like I want to see who, I want to be a champion. I want to be the best. And so if there's a measurement of you're the winner and they're not, that's something I'm interested in as well. How hard are you on yourself? Like at night when you're laying in bed, are you just like, just like beating yourself up? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not that hard on myself, but I'm, what I am is I'm, I hold myself to a very, very high standard. And so when I know when I had a great day and I know if I maybe didn't make the right decision and I, and I do wake up even earlier to come fix that problem the next day. And so I'm not hard on myself. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm confident in the decisions I make. And at the same time, um, I know I can get better every day. And that's what I try to do every day. Yeah. yeah. Listen, Matt, um, I, I hope I speak for the whole community and I say thank you for all the work that you've done for us. I, I obviously you've done our show multiple times. You have a lot of other things you could be doing right now. And I really appreciate you being on. You guys have anything for Matt before it takes off? As Just yeah, not really. I mean, I, I, you kind of told the future last show, right? Q3, Q4 are going to be huge, I think. And uh, I mean, buckle up and you, you, you can't walk down to the street or go to a party without probably picking up three or four loans if you're in this business right now. 
Yeah, no, it's exciting. I, like I said, the next six to 12, six to 18 months will be the best in mortgage history. Let's take advantage of we're ready to go. And UWM's having our record or best month of all time. This month, we'll have a, we'll beat it next month. The month after, we'll beat it. And that's just as long as we can continue to help you guys succeed, then we'll succeed. And so we appreciate you guys and all the brokers out there. And let's keep dominating. All right, Matt. Anything to say before you go? No, just that's excited it. to be part of it, including me. Thank you, man. Thank you. You, Thanks, you go man. get back to work. I need you working. We'll, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Bye-bye. All right. So, man, that was pretty, that was pretty cool uh, uh, for Matt to take the time to do that. You know what I mean? It was really nice. Uh, he, I think he answered some pointed questions uh, about some stuff. Yeah he, um, yeah, he definitely did. I mean, he really doesn't, he looks, he really looks like Quicken as a, as a real problem, as a model for, for the broker community. Uh, I know Sal, you and I have said this in the past. It's like, I, don't, I mean, it's just, it's hard for us to see it because we're just in the trenches sometimes. And, you know, maybe he's got a different view from, from yeah, his perspective. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, it's not like I uh, actively, I mean, I want to do what's best for the client. That's not always the best rate, right? Sometimes options oh, yeah. or yeah. overlays, for example, through COVID, right? Like Quicken kept right. things pretty loose. They didn't do any overlays. So, yeah, there's a few loans we sent there and they closed. And overall, they went pretty well. But, like, we also use another lender and some almost all their business there and, and things went pretty well, but you know, now I'm seeing the effects of, of overloading, right? Even Quicken was overloaded hold times, 30 minutes on the phone. It was nuts. You know, people not calling or yeah. emailing you back. That's just not what they're known for. Yeah. Right. I mean, they always do at least usually yeah. you should call you back. So for us, I mean, it's been uh, interesting through the pandemic and through everything that we've had to do uh, to break away from UWM for a short amount of time. And now it's like, you know, I, I, I love when I got a little bit <laughs> sending UWM. It's just so much easier, right? I you mean, gotta, you got to appreciate it. it really you more, right? Like, oh, is, it, is the, are the docs signed? Is it, what's uploaded? Is it uploaded? Where is yeah. it in the queue? Can we push it in the queue? You can buy fast passes to push it up to the front of the line. Like every broker's like uh, dream, right? They, they basically solved for almost all your problems. You know, it's it's kind of nuts. So the bottom line is, dude. The, the bottom line is, it's a better experience. Yeah. You well, know? and I think yeah. that no matter what, right? And I think through all the the BS of of aim and the issues or whatever anyone has to say, like like Matt said, you quantify it in numbers. And if at yeah. the end of the day their numbers are the best and they're doing the most loans, you don't have to really read between the lines to know that they're doing the best things. It's not that they have the best rates. There's always a yeah. better rate. They're doing the best things. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was really, really interesting that he said, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we call sending a loan <laughs> to UWM a break. <laughs> That's awesome, Megan. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I thought it was really interesting that he was, he was like, listen, if they did, if the Quicken did something good for the brokers, I'd be down. I'd be like, good with it. I don't know how true that is, but like, well, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he's, he's a businessman, right? I mean, yeah. if it benefits everyone, he's about it. If it doesn't, I mean, why would he be for it, right? And yeah. through all the bullshit he has to deal with between his own internal employees, not that they're, you know, bad or having uh, anything of that sort, but I mean, he's got a lot on his plate already. I don't think he really cares what Quicken does or if they want to be a part of it as much as what they do to potentially hurt uh, everything they built, right? Because they can easily, yeah. with the most money, I mean, the, the man with the most money, like he said, has the most options, right? So right. they... Get all this money and they're like, fuck it, man, we're going to take over and we're about to take our rates from, you know, two and a half to whatever. They're going to bleed out for a little bit trying to essentially buy market share. Right. I mean, right, yeah, right. a lot of a lot of people, unfortunately, like he said, you don't necessarily see the big picture. Look at the small things and we'll, we'll tag on and they might win some customers long term that way. Right. So right. I think uh, and <laughs> what they do on the other end, I guess, is what keeps them long term. Well, we think yeah. about yeah business model i mean we talked about it i think a little bit last week but matt's business model is basically he has a massive retail operation essentially except it's not retail i was going to ask him that he has loan officers all across the country they're basically his employees right all these broker shops everywhere are basically his employees that he doesn't have on payroll but he still pays them to deliver a loan to him Right, I guess. But listen, every every lender has that opportunity. Every wholesale lender has that opportunity. The difference is Matt's mindset is he's all in on that, on that, right? Those are all his employees. So he gives them all the tools they need to succeed, just like they were in his building working for him. They have all the technology. They have all the resources. They have everything devoted to him. 
or through him. Or yeah, but it's only because they both win together, and not to sound sappy or corny, but like, but it's true. Obviously, if you if you put the 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 best weapons in the soldiers' hands, right? Like they're, it's unfair for everyone else, and and that's not to say that that's not. Uh, something they shouldn't do. I mean, it's unfair because it's just so much better. And other matter. people have to step their game up if they want to play. Right. It goes back to the mindset that, that he was talking about of, you know, Quicken, if they wanted to, to collaborate and do something better for the broker community, he'd be all about it, which I kind of agree with. I mean, doing a loan at Quicken as a broker kind of sucks. But yeah, it, I mean, listen, I, I, I've had worse experiences. I don't think it's the worst. It, well, it's not even so much the experience. I think it's just the mindset, again, of like, and, and I said earlier, right? Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I don't care if my girlfriend ends up with my uncle. I just want to yep. get that done for that. <laughs> I want to go on that date and be but, done with it, right? Like, I listen, I just want I'll tell you right now. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. This community doesn't give a shit. At, at the end of the day, if Quicken came out with some type of thing where people could make a lot of money and they, like and this sweet process and they were badass, they would win in the they would win business for, for being a for for badass I mean, like yeah. you're right their 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 wholesale side isn't as fine-tuned as a retail for sure right like and like we it's it's the what? difference is they don't view the wholesale as like their employees or their partners like matt does they retail at quicken gets everything they have the marketing they have the tools they have they're they're in their buildings right so yeah. they are employees where matt's like no these guys are my employees right I mean, he doesn't think like that but that's essentially what he has where quicken doesn't we're like an addition at a Quicken, and I don't want to put words in their mouth, but that's what it feels like, right? We don't get all the access to all the cool shit that Quicken has, like we do at at, at UWM, where Matt gives us access to all his cool shit. Yeah, you know, well, really, you know, like the same to be said about some other lenders too, right? Like, how do you feel when you get a uh, a loan estimate from Caliber Retail, and yeah. it's absolutely crushing everything you have? It's like, no, it's not. Yeah. Just, where did that yeah, come yeah. from? Yeah, it's, where did that come yeah. from? I'd have to pay to close that. How did that happen? Right. Caliber. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, there's, I mean, look, everybody's, look, it, it, we are a for profit business. People are going to do things and make profit. And ultimately, uh, these brokers that act all high and mighty and fuck quicken and, and, and Austin's a, and they attack force. Listen, you guys, Austin, Bob, all these guys are really, really good people. Some of the best people I've ever met. That doesn't mean that I, and Bob and I, and, well, and I mean, Austin, ultimately, we talk like, I mean, ultimately, yeah. like, this business wouldn't be where it's at without Quicken, right? I mean, Quicken is the... I wouldn't be where I'm at without Quicken. I wouldn't for sure, but I'm just saying, like, uh, as much or as we want to say, like, it sucks to sound alone there or whatever, that's fine. But, like, I kind of look at that as, like, that's, like, my, uh, what do they call it, alma mater or whatever. Like, that's that's where I went to school, essentially, for mortgages, right? Alma mater? <laughs> whatever, dude, you know. But, like, uh, they're, like, my... Uh, but, you know, you're, you're a valedictorian, they, huh, bud? Sure. <laughs> I do have my um, degree, though. <laughs> but, there, you go. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. But uh, so, ultimately, you know, they're, uh, they've changed the industry completely, right? I mean, before yeah, you're you like, them, brother. mortgage in yeah. a box, like they are, uh, they push the envelope, the frontier to the extreme where everyone else could kind of hop on and make this happen. They raised the bar for everyone to do e-sign docs and all of this, right? They, if they didn't do what they did, UWM could be, and I don't think that this this is Matt's goal ever, but they could be half as good and still be better than everyone else, right? So they're lapping people think, in their in their process. Absolutely, right. they're they're lapping people on that. They've done a lot of great, um, a lot of great things. I would like, I mean, I would like to see some other companies come in with more of a mindset like Matt of being able to provide everything to a broker channel like Matt does. Uh, maybe, not, maybe that's not Quicken. Could you imagine if Quicken gave us like all their tools that the retail has? But they won't do that. I mean, that, it doesn't make sense. Like to see all their companies are so focused on even closing loans. Right. I like, like they, They're struggling. Yeah, to even yeah, yeah, close yeah. Loans. Like that's yeah. just like the, the problem, right? Like the only, there's maybe a couple companies who, you know, kind of stay in their niche and do what they do. But Quicken does have the uh, money, the bandwidth, the people. Uh, they're in the, the largest mortgage hotspot in the country, right? They have the ability to be number one and well, maybe not number one, but much better than they are. Right. I mean, I, I'm sure they do have anyone has the ability, I guess, to be number one, if they really put their mind and money and, and mouth to the, I, the narrative. I thought it was right? super oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. 
No, I'm just saying, I mean, I think it just depends on like, you know, like everyone's saying, what what is their prerogative, right? Is it to grow their retail uh, or is it to grow a true wholesale channel where they're completely partnered and will listen to to what you say to, to help be better? I mean, it, do you that, think, that's do you what think my- do you brokers give a shit about the, the intents if, if, if the process is good and they can make money off of it ultimately? I mean, I think everyone has probably in the broker mindset once in a while thinks like that, right? Like shit, you know, uh, I can get this client a much lower rate, not have to take my commission short or whatever, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, sometimes you got to think like that because it may end up being a better experience for the client too. And if they get a better deal, that's that's one thing, right? But like, I think overall, uh, you have to think of of the consequences of doing so right and if you're shifting a large amount of business that way because of that you're probably going to lose long term right i mean nothing is is essentially free i mean like like conquest right like yeah tons of brokers had to essentially take their loan short go borrow or paid whatever right i mean with us we're correspondents so luckily we didn't have to charge any points or anything and we just kind of said hey we're not going to make shit on these loans but it's the right thing Right. They're going to get done yeah. quick. It's going to be a good experience. And like Matt said, it, it did build referrals. And now, you know, margins are more in place. And it's not like we have to charge points to give someone a really low rate. Right. Yeah. You know, I thought it was interesting that he said, yeah, this makes quick and stronger. He was like, yeah, absolutely. It makes them stronger. Um, listen, I know that Austin and Bob and the guys over at QLMS, I mean, they are trying to have a really good company. They're not like, yeah. oh, we're just a part of Quicken and not, we're just part of retail. Yeah, they I truly believe that thinking, in what their product is. You know what I mean? I think, I think obviously for an IPO, right, that looks good on the sheet too. But if those are facts, like he said, not not thoughts or, or uh, uh, an estimation, if that's the truth, and they put it on their, you know, IPO paperwork that 73% of our wholesale business is retained through our, you know, retention channel. I mean, and that's a fact. I mean, that is kind of fucked up, right? But I don't know if it was wholesale, I think it's overall business. Also, Just to be fair, oh, it's overall business. All right, right. I didn't know. But no, it, it, yeah, it wasn't wholesale. It, it was just their overall wholesale. business is way bigger than wholesale channel in general, right? But what they, uh, well, way not bigger. general. Wholesale. Well, not the wholesale channel, but, you know, at least like uh, what UWM does, right? But yeah. with that being said, um, you know, the other part is too, I mean, as a broker, I mean, you just got to keep up with your people. I mean, it, yeah, don't these, rely on the company. You can't rely on other people. I mean, I'm so sick. Oh, they took my, I like didn't call. UWM lets me know that, you know, my client got their credit pulled. But yeah. Typically yeah, yeah, yeah. when they let me know that it's because I pulled it because I called them to help them save money. Right. Because right. You, you take care of your clients. Yeah. You have a system, you have a process, you help people. Yes. Like, um, to rely you want to think you are a, a retail loan officer and your company is just going to feed you leads, right? Like you need to put yourself in the position to succeed. And that might be pulling your past clients and, and saying, Hey, you're at a 4%. I can get you to two nine, nine. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Otherwise they might see it because it, it's getting hit in the face every single day as a client right now via the news ads this that they walk into their bank mm-hmm. how the how did you not call them first right and if you didn't <laughs> well it happens busy or you it happens. Process, it, and it's it, 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 okay. better but but you, you don't wake up sick throwing up because you didn't call that client that's on you that's on you like, a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know. And if, if, if it's not quick in calling, I always, this is my argument with it. It's like, if it wasn't quick in, what if like Bank of America called them? Is that my, is that, is that, is that Quicken's fault too? You know what I mean? Well, if you <laughs> like, referred it to Bank of America, it's pretty fucked up. So, no, I'm, s- I'm saying in general, you can lose a deal to a million different ways. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but yeah, we're eliminating a big one by, by like not churning that book by the retail lender that, that wrote yeah, the loan or that, that has it, the I mean, if it, if it's essentially, on a plate though with a with a steak knife right next to it right this is a juicy refi right like we're just gonna take it and uh in the end right i mean we can speculate all we want to talk about them we both know uh people on both sides are both awesome people right like awesome this is awesome anything some of the best best people i've ever met being in the trenches and having to work with them both right there's obviously a large disparity of experience and price and everything one side to the other right so if they want to get to that level or uh be better they just got to play better and the results are all that matter 
the numbers are all that matter in the end because that typically dictates right. what you did, right? I mean, if you right. could have all the social media and advertising and whatever as a loan officer, right? And people think you're a bigger deal than you really are, but at the end of the day, what would you close, right? What'd you right. do? Right. Because that's all that matters. Right. Um, man, I was, I love that. I mean, uh, listen, what, what do you, well, last question for you guys. What do you think, Sal, you probably have the most intimate uh, knowledge of this. What, what would Quicken have to do in your opinion to, to be, to be better in their space? And what do you think UWM has to do to get better in their space? I think Quicken just needs to, uh, listen a little more to brokers, right? Like whenever we have conversations as to, what went wrong or why, or, or, you know, it's always like someone's got to kind of get involved. And my problem isn't necessarily their people, right? It's not like they got bad people working there. They got great underwriters and, you know, the AEs are cool. It's their process. And I'm like, dude, let me do my own thing. Like, I don't, why are we having this happen? I could just tell title what they need and they can upload it. Right. So I think that they need to maybe put a little more control in the broker's hands because that's frustrating, right? And a lot with other lenders too. It's like, and mind you, this is a technology piece, right? And I can understand why some lenders don't have potential. I don't understand why Quicken doesn't have the best. best That's uh, what I'm saying. Like, the other companies might not have the money to, like, you know, generate your own docs and do this, right? But like, Quicken has that ability and the money to do it. And if they snap their fingers, it might not be overnight, but I'm sure within a year, they could have a I think the red tape at Quicken. I think the red tape at Quicken was, was getting really bad at the end there like, because it used to be very flat. Like you could get things done back in the oh, yeah, day. Um, yeah. Now that they're going public, I think it's even hard. I, I like, I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. I think UWM, um, you know, sometimes it's kind of like when they, you know, beat their drum. I mean, you gotta, you either do it or you don't. Right. Like this whole like yeah. conquest awesome right awesome pricing low rates right but a two day lock like come on man you can't make the, the <laughs> i almost wanted to ask him that but you can't make the pricing a little bit worse for 30 days because mind you they have the ability to close it in 22 days but sometimes people don't want to close people are out of town or whatever right or or you got to purchase it's, it's a little so, gimmicky quick quick and does that they do these well, little gimmicky things thing. yeah we as a correspondent i'll take it on the chin right? Hey, pricing got worse. I mean, I could call that client and say, hey, pricing got worse. Uh, and I told you we could only lock for 22 days. And since that is what happened and you chose me in this past eight days, the rates got worse. So now I can either charge you points or just not even have that conversation, take it on the chin and we move forward, right? Which is typically what we've been doing. And to the same point, things slide the other way a little bit too, right? But it's frustrating to not be able to on a purchase, right? Promise what you put up front. You can't, you know? I mean, yeah, rates yeah, get so bad right. that rates aren't even available anymore, right? right. I mean, right. and that did happen. And ultimately, what I don't like about that is it hurts the client, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not about yeah. me. Yeah. I'll lose the money or whatever to make sure that the client's happy, but it could hurt the client. So that was my my only gripe about, about the whole thing. But really, honestly, I mean, it's hard to uh, bash anything they do. I mean, we crush it there. We would not be where yeah, we're at without yeah. having those back those tools in our back pocket. I mean, we've seen this through working largely with a new wholesale lender. They do a great job, but our process has suffered. Things aren't as clear. Documents go out where they're like, "What is going on, dude? Yeah. Like, how did my yeah, cost yeah. triple?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay. yeah I can't yeah, control yeah. that." You're like, why? You know? Right. Yeah. So it does suck. Uh, yeah. Listen, I mean, look, I'm, I'm glad he addressed the things he addressed. I'm glad he admonished the the act that that Anthony did. Um, there is a shot for an olive branch, apparently, that, that we learned today. There, there might be healing. Maybe well, maybe we could be the show that brings healing. Maybe we can bring them together and, like, like have them, like, no, nah, you don't think so? <laughs> no? It's you possible. don't think that's I mean, listen, Like you said earlier, never say never, right? Because the olive branch will never. Never say never. <laughs> what? So there's an opportunity for an olive branch only because the olive branch will never come. 
<laughs> oh, you think it's a fictitious olive? I got it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think either side is thrown on an olive branch right now, man. I love them both, dude. I, 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 I'm very, I'm like, like it disappoints me because I'm a, I'm a prop of a broken family. I feel like I, like I might, like, I feel like my mom is, my mom is quick and loans. My dad is, is uh UWM. Right. And they don't like each other and I'm stuck in the middle. That's how I feel. Match you know, I love both these guys. What's that? Did Matt your daddy? Yeah. All right, guys. That's my. That's, all right. We gotta go. <laughs> all, right. all right, let's not get it. All right, all right, guys. Yeah, I love going. you all. Everybody that's listening, please go to irepodcast.com. Go to you know, like us on the app. Smash that like button, as they say. Um, support us if you like what we're doing. If you don't, go fuck yourself. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>